going to continue today. We're going to, we're going to continue in our series from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We've been going through 1 Corinthians 13, uh, verses 4 to 7, actually the first little part of uh, chap uh, uh, sorry, verse 8 as well. And we've just been going through all of the different points that are in that passage. And what I'm going to do, just kind of as a quick reminder, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to read 1 Corinthians 4 to the beginning of 8. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. This is the, the text of the series that we're in the middle of right now. And we've been going through week by week, talked about what it means to be patient, what it means to be kind, what God's love is, how we can show God's love to other people as well. And we've been going through each point and how to live displaying God's love to other people. Today what we're going to talk about is the, the part at the end of verse 7. It says, Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. The word to bear, bear all things, what, what does that mean? What does it mean in the Bible when it says that love bears all things? What does it mean? What does it mean when it says we need to bear all things? What this means is that it means to cover over. It means to bear. It also means, it also can mean to suffer under something. And when we're talking about love, when we're talking about God's love for us, God's love is very, very patient. He doesn't, when we do wrong, he doesn't go ahead and display it to people. He doesn't say, oh, look what this person did. They messed up. They, they did this wrong. They did that wrong. No, he is very, very patient with us. And it's not saying that when we, when we make a mistake or when we fail that there's no consequences. No, there's always consequences to, to when, we, when we fail. But God is always patient with us. When he talked about the word, uh, love is patient, well, a, part of that, a part of that meaning means that God is long-spirited. That means that he doesn't just kind of snap and just, boom, everything's, you know, all of his judgment. No, he's, he's, he's faithful. He's patient. He, he knows what the process of time can do in the heart of a person. And this is the way that God is, 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 is encouraging us when it says that love bears all things. It also says that love believes all things. And this word is used more often in the Bible. It means to, to, have, to have faith in or to, to believe something, to put our trust in something. Love believes all things. And what this means is that Love believes God in every situation and in every circumstance. It doesn't waver in confidence. It doesn't waver in faith, but it believes in God through everything. Some of the verses where, in the Bible where it talks about love, um, about that same word believe, uh, in John 20, verse 31, John talks a lot about believing because the whole purpose of his book is so that people will come to faith in Jesus as the Savior. And so he gives evidence from the beginning of the book to the end of the book saying, look, this is who Jesus is. This person believed. This person believed. This person believed. This person testified about who Jesus is. And the whole culmination of that is that in John 20, verse 31, it says, These are written 
so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. So he's saying, this is why I've written everything. This is the reason, is because I want you to believe in Jesus. I want you to believe in Jesus. So another verse is in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. It says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he is, believe that he exists, and that he rewards those who seek him. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. So, in order to draw near to God, we must believe. We must believe. We must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. And so, this same word that we see in 1 Corinthians 13, where it talks about love believes all things, is that it means that love always perseveres in believing and in, in every situation it says, okay, I know, even this difficult situation, I don't know what's happening, I don't know what the outcome is, but I'm going to have faith and I'm going to continue to believe. That's what love does. Okay? Love hopes all things. Okay? Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things. Okay? And this word hope, it means exactly what it is. It's, it's hoping. It's, it's confidence. It's confidence that we're going to make it through. We're going to see tomorrow. We're not going to die today, but we're going to continue on. We're not going to be defeated by this. But because we are with God and we have his love in our lives, we can continue to move forward. It's an expectation. It's a confidence. It's a trust. Romans 8 verse 25 says, But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Hoping is, is, is confidence that we're going to receive that which we have faith for, that's that which we are believing for. Hebrews 11.1, 1, it says, Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not yet seen. And so we see in all of these things, there's a connection there. Believing, hope, enduring, covering, uh, bearing all things. It's, a, it's like in the Christian life, there's going to be trials there's going to be difficulties, but this is saying, come on, let's endure together. Let's not give up. Let's not falter. Let's not fail. Let's join our hearts and our faith together. Let's stand up in the difficult times and say, okay, we're going to continue on because God continued on for us. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. The last... Of these four, it says, he, uh, love endures all things. And endure, it means basically to stay under something. It means that, okay, yeah, this is a big, heavy burden. It's difficult, but I'm going to stay under. I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to continue to stand. I'm going to hold on. I'm going to see the end. I'm going to, I'm, I'm not going to fall. I'm not going to give up. But it's a staying. It's an enduring. Love endures all things. It means to, to bear trials. It means to have fortitude. It means to persevere. It means to endure. It's to, to, to suffer. Listen to some of these words or some of these verses where this same word endure is used in the Bible. Matthew 10, 22. This is the words of Jesus. He says, you will be hated by everyone because of my name, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. The one who endures to the end will be saved. 
Matthew 24, verse 13, the same thing. Jesus is the words of Jesus. Jesus says, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. Mark 13, verse 13, same thing. Jesus, the words of Jesus. You will, buy, you will be hated by everyone because of my name, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. There is value in the Christian life. There is value in enduring. There is value in enduring. It's, it's the attitude that says, I'm going to make it through today. I'm going to continue on through today. And it's not saying that, okay, I have to endure this, you know, forever. But it's just saying, I'm going to stay faithful to God today. I'm going to make the decision. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not running from God. I'm not indulging in what my flesh wants me to do. No, I'm going to stay right where God has me. And I'm going to endure. It might be difficult. Even Jesus says, you will be hated by everyone because of my name. But the one who endures. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be difficult. But... God wants us to endure. Let me read some other verses where this same word is used. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. That's 1 Timothy 2.10. 1 Timothy 2.12 says, If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. James 1.12, blessed is the man who remains steadfast, okay, who endures under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Okay, so God says the person who endures, and when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised them. So there's value in enduring. In the Christian life, there is great, great value in enduring. But I believe all four of these points, to bear all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, I think they're a package. They go together. A person who endures can't endure if they don't have belief and if they don't have that, 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 that hope. Why, what's the purpose of enduring if there's no hope? God wants us to say, okay, yeah, this is difficult. God, yeah, it, 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 might be, it might be difficult, but I'm going to endure this because of the hope that I have, because of the belief that I have. Because of the love that we have in Jesus. And the enduring is not an enduring that says, I'm, this is going to be my situation forever. It's an enduring until the end. There is going to be an end to all of the difficulty that we have in life. There is going to be a finishing of those things. These verses, it says, he who endures to the end will be saved. Enduring what to the end? The difficulties, the trials, the persecutions, the temptation, all of those things will come to an end. We just have to endure them. Because when those things come to an end, there's the salvation, there's the freedom, there's the hope, there's the joy with Jesus. You know, it's great to start on a journey, but it's even greater to get to the destination. And it's great to, to have these beginnings, but there's going to be a greater joy when all of our faith is fulfilled when we see Jesus face to face. This is the hope that we have. This is the, the joy that is set before us. Jesus had a joy set before him, but this is the joy set before us. And yeah, sometimes we may come to faith for one reason or another, for this reason or that reason. I was talking to somebody just the other day, and they, they were just sharing honestly. They said, you know what? It was, I was, I gave my life to the Lord out of fear. I, I was, I, someone told me about 
hell and all that sort of stuff. And initially, that was my first experience with faith. As I said, you know, I prayed, asked God to be the Lord of my life because I was afraid. And you know what? That's okay. It's not bad to, 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 to be afraid. It's, you know, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, the Bible says. But continuing on the journey, that's the beginning, but it doesn't stay that way. And the beginning is good, but the end is going to be better when we see the fulfillment of our faith. Ecclesiastes 7, 8 says, The end of a matter is better than its beginning. A patient spirit is better than a proud spirit. Now, when I, was, when I first started looking at, thinking about these four points here, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. I was thinking about it from our perspective, from man's perspective. Okay, and I thought to myself, yeah, okay, so this is what we do towards God. God doesn't have to do these things towards us. How can God have faith towards us? How can God believe? How can God hope towards us? But when I, I was thinking about it some more and just meditating on these verses, I, 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 I truly believe, I came to the realization that I think God really does have hope for us. And it's interesting because we have faith in God. And what that faith is, is it's a confidence that God is able, that God will do those things that he promised. And it's a, a, a belief in who he is and in the power of his, his word and his might and, and his name. But you know what? I believe that God has confidence in himself too. He has confidence that his work will fulfill the things that he set out to do. And this is his love towards us. He is always believing the best for you. Because he knows what his power can do in your life. He knows that if we allow him, he will bring change to, his, to our lives. He will bring transformation. And this love that he has for us believes, hopes. It's always rooting for us. It's always, come on, we know you can do, we know, we know that this is gonna, this is gonna bring great fruit. It endures. It, 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 he's, he's so patient with us. When we fail, when we fall, he doesn't just, you know, kick us. All right, I'm done with you. Go find somebody else. No, he doesn't do that. He's patient. He says, come on. He says, I know what, I, I have confidence. I know what my power can do in you. I know the power of Jesus. I, I know these things. Come on, let's, let's continue. Let's move forward. Let's, even though... You've messed up. I'm going to endure. My love is always faithful. Love is, God's love is always, always faithful. And reading the verse that we read during communion, it uses this same Greek word to describe what Jesus did. It says, looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Love endures all things. And Jesus' love for you endured the cross. Endured the cross. He, he didn't say, all right, God, this is too heavy for me. It's too big for me. Get me out of here. The Bible says he could have called down legions of angels to come and help him. But he said, he said Father, I will drink the cup. I will, I will endure it for all of those out there. For all of those who will believe in my name and come into relationship with me. That's what he did. He endured. He endured the cross. For us. He endured the cross, despised the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus loves you. 
Jesus loves you so much. He believes in what he can do in your life. Maybe people have told you that you have no value. Maybe people have told you you have no future. Maybe you've told yourself that I, I'm, I'm too messed up. I've sinned too many times. The weight of sin is too big. God would never do anything for me. I'm not worth it. But that's not the word of God over your life. That is not God's word for your life. God never said those things. He never said those things. What his word is over your life is words of hope. He has a hope for your life because he knows the truth of his power. He knows the truth of what a relationship with him can bring into someone's life. He knows the change that the Holy Spirit can do from the inside out. And he's never given up on you. When you've given up on yourself, when everybody else has given up on you, God has never, ever given up on you. God says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. An everlasting love. That's his word to you. That's his word to you. And that's, the, that's where it says he's the author and the finisher of our faith. And if you've never put your faith in Jesus before, today is the day for the be today is a good day to begin a relationship with him. And that's how God shows his love towards us. He bears all things. He bears with us when we mess up and we do wrong. He believes in the power, his own power in our life. He he hopes and he endures all things for us. And that is his love towards us. How can we show this same love to God and towards others also? In our relationship with God, we show this love towards him by not quitting. By not quitting. Because we need to understand that this life is not easy. It doesn't matter if you're a believer or not a believer. Life is tough. Let's just get it out there right now. Let's just lay everything out on the table. Life is not easy. Life has its ups and downs. We show this love to God by staying, by remaining, by enduring, by saying, God... Yeah, everything around me, I don't understand. I don't see how I could get out of this situation. I don't see how things could change. But with this here, this relationship that we have here, I'm not going anywhere. I am staying right here. I'm going to believe. I'm going to hope. I don't see the way out. But my God is able. And the way that we show this love towards God is simply by enduring. It has benefit for our life because, like it said in Matthew and Mark, he who endures to the end will, save, will be saved. But it shows a faithfulness. Faithfulness comes from a faith that we have in someone or something. And when we have faith in God... We can continue to be faithful to him and saying, God, yeah, I don't have all the answers. This is tough. This is difficult. But you know what? I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to endure. And that's what love does. That's how we can show this love to God. How we can show this love to others is simply by enduring. Simply by enduring. People need people who are faithful. Let me say that again. People 
need people who are faithful. What this world does is when a relationship doesn't meet my needs anymore, they say, okay, they wipe their hands, I'm done with it. You've hurt me too many times. I'm not getting what I want out of this relationship. Eh, I'm done. Love endures. And people need people who are faithful. And when we show this love to others by being faithful, by enduring, by continuing with them, it's, it's, it's something new that they've never seen before. And it's true, maybe they walk away from the relationship, but in our hearts we need to remain open to them because eventually they'll come back because people need people who are faithful. People need people who endure. Whether it be a friend that you had, maybe they walked away and they've done their own thing. They've said, no, I don't need this anymore. No, just continue, keep that door open. Text them, call them. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a family member who said, yep, I'm just gonna go do my own thing. I'm going to live my life my way. No. Don't write them off. Don't say, I'm done with them. Don't say, it's, it's over. No. Endure. Stay faithful to them. Stay faithful to that relationship. And eventually, people will come around. People will come around. They'll start to say, hey, hey, look, what about, what about my friend here? They've never talked about me behind my back. They've never said this. They've never written me off. They've never said, no, we're done. They've never said that. And so when they come back, they'll come back to those who are faithful. And that's how we can show this love to others. In our relationships, when people fail, how do we endure? We forgive. We forgive people when they, when they wrong us. We don't say, oh, that's it. I'm all done. Forget it. No. Someone who is faithful forgives because they know that the relationship is more important than the offense. And so they say, all right, I'm going to forgive because I want to continue. I want to continue in this relationship. When people fail us, forgive them. When they offend you, forgive I know it's not easy. And it takes a lot of time spent with the Lord, but that's how we can remain faithful. We can endure. We can show this love to other people. And when we're thinking about them and we're thinking about the relationship that we have, we always need to have the future in mind. We always have to be looking forward. We always have to think, okay, it is this way now, but things are going to change in the future. Things are going to be different. We're going to continue onward together. This is not the end. I'm not going to write everything off. I'm not going to wash my hands and say, all right, be done. No. Nope. We're going to continue in this together. And people will see a difference. They will see that agape love. Agape love is a committed love through thick and thin, ups and downs, good times, bad times. We're going to do this together. And let's be people who are faithful. We see God's faithfulness. We see what Jesus endured on the cross. And sometimes we have to endure difficulties. Sometimes we will be misunderstood. Sometimes we may be talked about behind our backs, but no, we're going to stay faithful. We're going to endure because there will be an end. And when, once that end comes, there's the joy and the salvation, the restoration, the openness of relationship. And that is what God wants in your life. He wants to shower that in your life. He wants to bless your life with that. But he also wants you to be a source of that blessing and that love for everybody around. Let's pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much that you endured the cross for us. Why, I don't know of anybody else who could have done that. I don't know anybody else who would want to have done that, who would have said, yes, I'm going to endure. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that for New Life Fellowship. I'm going to do that for every member out there. I'm going to do that for the Christians. I'm going to do that for people who don't even know me yet, who mocked me and spoke about me and slandered me and, and hated me. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus, you did this for those of us who are enemies of you. I don't know who would have done that. It's so amazing, the price that you paid. And Jesus, we thank you so much for the display of your love that endures, that bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Thank you, Jesus, for that love. And Jesus, today I pray that we would be people who can love you more like this. Maybe we've loved you some like this, but God, do that work within us. We invite you, Holy Spirit, right now to work in us, to be people who are faithful, not just faithful during the good times, but faithful through all times. God, help us to be people who are faithful to you, who endure in our love to, towards you. And God, help us to be that source of love for others as well. Help us to be the people who are faithful. Help us to be people who are faithful. Thank you, God, so much for your faithfulness towards us. Thank you that we have an example that we can strive towards, that we can live like. Continue to do that work in us this day, this week, this month, God. Help us to always keep these things in, in our minds, the, the love that you have for us, so that we can continue to show that love towards others. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness and your love. We give our hearts to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.